لله فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله all praise is due to Allah we seek his help and his guidance we seek refuge in Allah from the malice of our souls and the evil of our own actions whomsoever accepts Allah's guidance will never be misguided and whomsoever rejects Allah's guidance will never find guidance I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship other than Allah alone without any partners and I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and messenger dear brothers and sisters Please know that if I say anything true or beneficial today, that it comes from Allah, for all truth and benefit come from Him. If I say anything false or detrimental, then know that it comes from me, for I'm human and I'm, I'm prone to error. Is this a good volume? Should I not, is it too loud or is it just right? Just right? Oh, fantastic. Okay. It sounds, it sounds loud to me, but as long as, as long as you're enjoying it. All right. As long as the audience is happy, that's what, that's what matters. It's my pleasure and my honor to be delivering the khutbah today. I want to talk to you today about uh, the, the strategy of tyrants. The strategy of tyrants. And I want to talk about Fir'aun. You know, Fir'aun and Sayyidina Musa والسلام, are mentioned many times in the Qur'an, but there is this special one in Surah Al-Ghafir that I want to, I want to talk about. Allah uh, sends Sayyidina Musa as guidance. He says, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مُوسَى بِآيَاتِنَا وَسُلْطَانٍ مُبِينٍ Indeed, we have set Moses with our signs and a clear authority. Sultan, right? Sultan can mean authority. Like this person is the, the sultan of this country or that country. It means this person has authority. So he sent him with ayat وَسُلْطَانٍ مُبِينٍ and a clear authority. Now Fir'aun was the superpower at the time. Pharaoh had authority in the land. Pharaoh had the biggest army. They were the most advanced technologically. They had the most wealth, the most amount of money. They had treaties with, with other successful civilizations of that, of that time. And in fact, those civilizations would send their royalty and their scholars to Egypt to learn and then go back and teach their people. So even amongst other large civilizations, Egypt was the most successful. Everyone looked up to Egypt. So Pharaoh, he had authority in the land because of their wealth, because of their military, because of their technology. And Allah refers to the people of Pharaoh in the Quran as the people of the pegs. People of the pegs, what on earth does that mean? Like a peg, like that, you, you know, you, you drive a stake into the ground to hold up a tent, you put up a tent and you, you stretch it and then you put a peg in the ground. Vil outed, people of the pegs. It's referring to Pharaoh's armies. Pharaoh had a large army, that's how you control people, is with an army. And the army would move from one place to another and they would set up camp. And their camp was just a tent. So they would set up the tent and they'd use the pegs to hold the tent in place. But there's, there's some subtext here. The subtext is that Pharaoh uses this army to control people. He'll come, he'll create you know, people that are in power, and he'll create people that are, that are slaves, create internal division. Divide and conquer. We would, today we would call it divide and conquer. Allah says it very succinctly with with dil awtad, right? But you have to be someone had to tell this to me. I I had heard the phrase dil awtad. I had no idea what it what it was referring to, right? But now now I understand. Divide and conquer. It's Allah's way of saying it. But it's also suggesting that not only did Pharaoh have the capability to do this, but he in fact did this. Pharaoh maintained a massive army that would go from one area to the other, it would conquer new lands, and do whatever was, was needed to be done. So Sayyidina Musa was sent as a challenge to all of this. Sayyidina Musa was given ayat wa sultanin mubin, signs and a clear authority. 
So Sayyidina Musa had one type of authority, and Fir'aun had another type of authority. Fir'aun had an army. An army can kill you. An army can take your possessions. An army can oppress you. An army can inflict pain. That's a type of authority. Sayyidina Musa had authority of the truth. And he was sent with authority from Allah. Different types of authority. Superficially, you might compare these two and say, wow, Fir'aun is, I mean, you know, I believe in Allah, but if we're going to compare the two, Fir'aun seemed to have the upper hand. The people of Fir'aun no longer exist, no longer have any authority, but we are still talking about Sayyidina Musa. You just have to zoom out a little bit. So he sent his, so he sent Sayyidina Musa to Fir'aun, Wahaman wa Qarun. The verse says we're in Surah Al Ghafir. Who who are these people? Well, Fir'aun, we know Fir'aun. Fir'aun is the head of head of government. He's the king. He's royalty. Haman was his top military advisor. Right. So this is to the the people of Egypt. This is to the army of. Fir'aun, and it's to Qarun. Who is Qarun? Qarun was among Bani Israel. Qarun was among Bani Israel. But he was wealthy, he was a millionaire. How did he become a millionaire when his people are, are slaves? Because he was a hypocrite. He was a spy for Fir'aun. He would tell Pharaoh, this person's a troublemaker, this person's trying to overthrow you, these people don't like you, don't believe in you. Right? And he allowed Qarun to become very wealthy. But you gotta, you gotta tell me who the, the troublemakers are. So Allah sent Sayyidina Musa to all of them. So what was their first response? They wanted to keep him alive because the, you know, the slaves are useful. Slaves, slaves do work. That's why they had slaves. So they said, إِنَّهُ سَاحِرٌ كَذَّاب He's a magician and he's a liar. Now, when, I, when I'm telling you what's going on, I want you to take it and try to think about it in modern day terms. Because there's, there's a lot of wisdom here, and there's a pattern. I'll point some of that out, but I want you to kind of absorb it. Saharun kathab. In modern day terms, we'd say that's a, a propaganda camp campaign, right? Someone is coming with the truth, Someone is coming trying to help others. I don't like what they're trying to do. I'm going to try to discredit them. And I'm going to use whatever means I have at my disposal. So it was a media campaign. The Israelites, Ben Israel, are dangerous people. They're going to kick you out of your land, right? He's talking to the people of Egypt. Ben Israel, the slaves that have nothing, they're the dangerous ones. I mean, I, I hope you can appreciate the, the irony and the hypocrisy of Fir'aun saying this. They're the dangerous ones. They're gonna, they're gonna steal your land from you. They're gonna, they're gonna kill your way of life. So he kept people afraid of Sayyidina Musa and of Bani Israel. If you want people to do what you want, keep them afraid. When you're calm and you're not afraid, and someone tells you to do something that you know is wrong, you're probably not going to do it. But if you're afraid, I mean really afraid, you'll do whatever you have to do to protect yourself. They did it back then, they're doing it now. Keep them afraid. So he kept his people afraid of Sayyidina Musa and of Bani Israel. Now in a different verse, Allah mentions that Fir'aun has all the power. And Banu Israel, they live, you know, they were kind of segregated in a certain section. They had to live somewhere, right? They're the slaves, they had to live somewhere. So, but they were sectioned off in a certain part of town. They weren't allowed to go to other places, except with authority, except with permission, in what we would describe now as, a, as an open air prison. You live in your section over there, the slaves, we're going to live over here, you can come here to do your work because you're a slave, and then, and then you go back. 
And Allah says, we will show Fir'aun wa Harun wa Haman wa Qarun what they were afraid of all along. Ma kanu yahdarun. He's, Allah creates this analogy. Fir'aun, they have, he has everything. He is the most powerful civilization. He's the head of the most powerful civilization. And people that have nothing, Banu Israel. And he says, I will uh, show you what they were scared of all along. Ma kanu yahdarun. Fir'aun is the one that, that's, that's afraid? Allah is giving you insider knowledge. You'd, you'd never guess that Fir'aun was afraid. He had all the might, and the people that he was afraid of had nothing. But they were scared. They were scared of Banu Israel. And so Moses, Sayyidina Musa, demanded, release, release Banu Israel. They are servants of God. They're not, they're not meant to be your slaves. Release them. So how do they respond? Right? They tried the propaganda campaign. Didn't work. So now they have to take it a step further. So what does Fir'aun say? Aqtulu abna' al-mu'minun wa nisa'ahum. Kill the sons of the believers and keep their women alive. We're going to break their spirit. We're going to hit them where it hurts. What do you care about more than anything else in your life? Your kids. Kill their kids. That'll, that'll break them. Whatever spirit, whatever resolve they have, this will destroy. This was part of his military strategy. We're going to go after the believers and their, and their kids. But keep the women alive. So that the women are, are helpless and they have more kids. And in the future, if somebody tries to rise up, we'll kill their kids. And Allah replies, but the plan of the oppressor will be wasted. Now notice here, something you can easily gloss over. He doesn't say the plan of Fir'aun is wasted. He says the plan of the oppressor. He's be Allah is talking very broadly, generally. This is, this is an ayah from Allah, and it's telling you two things. One, there will be more oppressors, there will be more tyrants to come in the future. But he's also telling you they will all fail. Maybe in the short term, they have some limited success. And it's, for those that are on the receiving end, it's not easy. It's tough. May Allah make it, make it easy on them. May Allah give them strength and give them sabr. But Allah's telling you in, in, in black and white in the Quran, their plans will always fail. They are always doomed to fail. So that strategy failed, and he's wondering why, why do they still have faith? Killed their kids. You'd think that would be the end of it. Ben Israel and Sayyidina Musa were still there. They still had hope. They still followed him. They still defied Fir'aun. So they need a final solution, right? You got to ratchet up one more time. We tried the propaganda, didn't work. We killed their kids, that didn't work. We need to take it up another step. He said, let me kill Musa. Fir'aun went to his advisors. He said, let's, let's kill Musa. If killing their kids didn't work, let's kill their leaders. Now they're leaderless. Who are they going to follow now? Let's go from the other end. We tried their kids. Let's try their, their leaders. And there's something to, to note here. Sayyidina Musa, والسلام, remember, he was raised as the brother of Fir'aun. He was raised in the royal palace. He had every type of status you could imagine. He was not a slave. He was never a slave. This man had everything. So Fir'aun is sending a sign to his own people now. He says, even my own people, even my own brother, if you defy me, I will kill you. 
My, it's my own brother. I'm going to kill. You think I won't kill you? You're not part of my family? Either follow me or learn to shut up. That's what Fir'aun is saying. Nobody is safe. Even my own people are not safe. Nothing is going to get in the way of my authority, of, of, of my power, of my empire. I will kill whoever I have to kill to maintain it. So either follow me or learn to shut up. And Fir'aun makes this press release. Right? He's telling the people it's more propaganda. He said, I fear he will change your religion and cause corruption in the land. Fir'aun is talking about Musa. Fir'aun is worried about corruption in the land. It's, it's, it's laughable. It's laughable. But people believe it. He's saying, look at our civilization. We are the best of the best. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Fir'aun is, uh, Musa is coming. He wants to change your religion. He wants to change your way of life. These slaves that have made us wealthy, he wants to free them. Are you okay with this? These people are causing a lot of problems. Bani Israel, the slaves, are causing a lot of problems. What are, what are we going to do about it? They're going to radicalize you. They're going to convert you to their barbaric religion. We must save our nation. Fir'aun is worried about his nation, the, the biggest military power at the time, by a long shot. We're, we're in danger. We have to kill Bani Israel. We have to kill Musa. They will destroy your identity. They will destroy your greatness. So he says, we're going to do a ground invasion. We're just, this is the final solution. We're just, we're just going to kill them all. Right? And you know the story. They chase them to the sea. Sayyidina Musa performs a miracle and the sea parts. Right? You, you know how the story goes. But this is, this is what's happening. Ratchet, ratchet it up every time. If it doesn't work, we'll get more severe. Kill them all, final solution. And so he, he's going to give a speech to his, his army. Fir'aun is talking to his, to his army. Now the average person, even if they're not a great person, even if they're not a great person, if you tell them, we're going to go and we're going to commit genocide, we're going to kill an entire race of people, even the average person will hesitate, right? I mean, you don't, you don't have to be super noble to realize that, that's, that, there's, that there's something wrong with that. So he's talking to his, to his army. And this is in Surat Ash-Shu'ara, right? So Allah takes a, a detour. Now, there's, there's a different types of speeches before a battle. If you're in the minority, if you're you know, the, 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 the small army or the weak group, and you're about to fight the big army, or if you're the big army and you're about to fight the small army, it's different speeches. So if you're part of the, the small group, you're going to say something like, God is on our side. We have the truth. One of us is equal to 20 of them, right? Something along those lines. Even if you pass, even if you die, heaven awaits you. Inshallah, right? That's the kind of speech you would give when you're about to fight and you're, you're outnumbered. But what, what did he say? when the greatest military in the world are about to kill innocent civilians. Harmless, unarmed civilians with nothing more than the clothes on their back. He says, some of Bani Israel believe in what Musa is saying. And that's enough to kill them all. That's enough justification to kill all of them. Remember, Fir'aun thought he was, he was God. That was their religion. Some of Bani Israel don't believe in our religion. They don't believe that I'm God. Some of them believe, some of them don't. We don't know. But the ones that believe, that's enough justification to kill all of them. The rest, collateral damage, Akhi. It happens. 
human shields. We don't, we don't want to. We don't want to. We're a noble people. We're, we're a great people. They're making us do it. We have no choice. Our hands are tied. And they says, these are a pathetic people, and they have enraged us, and we will make every precaution this time. Right? We'll make sure that this plan is perfectly and fully executed. Fir'aun says, if you let them go, our nation will never be safe. It's either us or them. We have the upper hand now, but if you let them go, they might come back in a year, in five years, 50 years. These are, these are dangerous people. Clearly, they're, they're dangerous people. So it's for your, your own good, for the good of your family, for the good of your kids and your, and your grandkids. You have to exterminate Bani Israel. This is for the nation. This is what's good for the country. And he, he, he convinced his army that killing them was good for the country, was good for the, the nation. And that if you're patriotic, this is what you're going to do. If you are a patriotic Egyptian, you're going to go and you're going to commit genocide against Ben Israel. If you love your country, you're going to join me. You know, Allah says in other parts of the Quran many times, وَزُّيِّنَا الشَّيْطَانُ أَعْمَالُهُمْ The shaitan makes their deeds beautiful or attractive to them. How else do you convince people in that situation to commit genocide? Pharaoh tricks them and the shaitan, he whispers into the hearts of men. And he takes the most vile acts, the most vile acts. I mean, they, they already killed their kids. Might as well kill the rest of them. I mean, it's not, it's not that much worse. Khalas. There's not much left. And they were convinced that they were doing something noble. May Allah spare us from that type of delusion. If I, if I ever get that delusional, I hope that Allah just takes me before I do anything, anything harmful. Completely deluded in thinking that they were doing the right thing. I can imagine, you know, if Pharaoh was saying, Egypt has a right to defend itself. So Sayyidina Musa, when he, when he hears about this, you know, this, wasn't, this was a speech to the army, but everyone, everyone knows about it now. He says, indeed, I seek refuge in my Lord and your Lord from every arrogant one who does not believe in the day where they will have to stand trial. This is what Sayyidina Musa says to Pharaoh. Like, khalas, I came, I had a message, I delivered it, and you committed infanticide, you killed all the kids, now you're going to kill everybody else, there's nothing left for me to do. You are so unhinged, <laughs> all I can do is seek refuge in God from whatever actions you're going to try to do. And I like the way it says how from, from, the, uh, from the day where um, one who does not believe in the day where they will have to stand trial. He doesn't just say from, you know, wrongdoers or evil people. There's something very poetic. Someone who does not believe they will, they will ever have to stand trial. You know, I can, I can tell you this. So I'm an attorney. I'm in, I'm in court most days. And I can see, you know, when there's a witness on the witness stand and he's being interrogated about every little thing, Wallahi, it's very uncomfortable. Wallahi, it's very uncomfortable. I'm telling you. And I, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a humbling experience. And I'm, and I'm not the one on the witness stand. I'm the one that's asking the questions. But I remember verses like this. I remember that when, when you're in a position of authority, hold back a little bit. Remember that you're going to be in that position at some point. It's very scary. It's very scary. But if you don't believe in that, if you believe that you will, you will never be taken to account, why not? Do whatever you want. So he says, um, 
So that's what Sayyidina Musa says to Fir'aun. Now, uh, the last, last thing, because we're running out of time, there was a good man from Ali Fir'aun. There was a, a good man from the people of, of Egypt, right? Not everyone supported Pharaoh, right? Most, you know, it's just this is the situation that, that we're in. I disagree or I don't believe, but I'll just go about my, my business trying to do what I can. And this man is referred to as Mu'min Ali Fir'aun. Right, the, the mu'min from the people of Pharaoh. So uh, a mu'min is, um, so you know, we all strive to be Muslims, right? We, we believe and we do certain things. A mu'min is a step above that's a, a good Muslim, a, a, pious, a pious believer who does good deeds and who's conscious of, of God, right? So this is a, a good person. Mu'min Ali Fir'aun, uh, a mu'min from the people of Pharaoh. Surah Ghafir, right, we're back to Surah Ghafir. He says, do you kill a man merely because he says my Lord is Allah? while he has brought to you clear proofs from your Lord? And if he should be lying, then upon him is the consequence of his lie. But if he should be truthful, there will strike you some of what he promises you. Indeed, Allah does not guide one who is a transgressor and a liar. Indeed, Allah does not guide one who is a transgressor and a liar. This, this last line is, is really important. A transgressor. You know, if you harm one of ours, we're going to kill a thousand of yours. That's a, a, a transgressor. And when you simply ask for your rights, when you ask for your, for your freedom, and I demonize you for it, and I make you out to be the threat, that's a, that's a liar. Musrifun kathab, a transgressor and a liar. Allah will never guide them. Yahdi. But Yahdi comes from Huda. Huda is generally um, translated as guidance. But Huda can also mean success. Allah will never give success to people that are transgressors and liars. So, my dear brothers and sisters, These are the tactics of a tyrant. These are the tactics of Fir'aun. And this is the story of how Allah saved Bani Israel from Fir'aun. This is not about the Muslims of today. This is not about the Muslims who lived during the time of the Prophet This is about tyrants, their tactics, and their formulas so that we can, we can recognize it and learn from it and realize, ah, you know what, history is repeating itself. And there's one more thing that I, I want to say, but take it with a grain of salt, because I'm, I couldn't find the ayah, but I'm certain that I've, I've read it at some point, right? Bani Israel, so they've escaped from Fir'aun. And this is such foreshadowing in the Qur'an. Allah is telling you what's going to come down the road. So they've escaped from Fir'aun. And they say something along the lines of, I forget exactly what it was, but they say something along the lines of, what if, what if he returns? Right? We're safe now. What if he returns? What if he comes back? What if the next pharaoh? I mean, there's still a whole empire there. Right? What if they come after us? And Sayyidina Musa replies, I forget exactly what he says, but he said something along the lines of, basically, don't worry about them. Worry about what you will do if you are given authority in the land. Subhanallah. Remember, this whole thing started with Sultan. He sent Ayat and Sultan and Mubin and a clear authority. They had the authority of truth. Allah gave them Sayyidina Musa. He gave them the Torah, the Torah. He gave them truth. What are you going to do when you get the other type of authority? What kind of people are you going to be? That's what you should worry about. This was in the Quran about a people 35, Sayyidina Musa was, you know, 3,500 years ago. Supplicate to Allah to forgive your sins.
my dear brothers and sisters, we live in peculiar times. You know, you would, you would read these ayat, and you would, it's like night turns into day and day turns into night. Fir'aun is saying that these are the dangerous people. They're the ones that are causing corruption. And you think that's, that's insane. No one's going to believe that. People believe it. People can be convinced to believe anything. But I want to uh, finish with a gentle reminder. I want us to remember 9-11 and what happened after 9-11. And the propaganda machine that was created against Muslims after 9-11 the acts of a very small group of people were used to demonize one-fourth of the world's population. Muslims are one-fourth of the world's population. We're still trying to recover from that propaganda. Don't make the same mistake. Just as Sayyidina Musa said, what are you going to do when you have authority? Right? What are you going to do when now you're not on the receiving end? We don't want to demonize Judaism. They're Ahlul Kitab, they're people of the book. Sayyidina Musa, you know, he's as much ours as he, as, he, as he is theirs. And there are many Jews and many people in Israel that object to what's happening strongly. If you look, you can see people having, in Israel, they're protesting and they're marching and they recognize that what's happening is, is, is wrong. So we don't want to demonize all of them, right? We don't want to make the same mistake against them that was made against us. Oh Allah, bless us with goodness in this life and the next. Oh Allah, spare us from the torment of the fire. Oh Allah, do not let our hearts deviate after you have guided us. Oh Allah, do not let this world be our biggest concern or the extent of our knowledge. Oh Allah, bless us in our health, our wealth, our time, our, our family, and our friends. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأقم الصلاة.